I've created an absolute monster in Baldur's Gate 3, and today I'm gonna teach you everything you need to know about how to replicate it. Let's get to it. Have you ever wanted to become a semi-immortal god being in Baldur's Gate 3? Well, you can, and you can do it as early as level five, and you only need two items to accomplish it. Let's start off with the base of the build, so one through five, because at level five, the build is mostly activated. However, it improves drastically as you continue to level. We're gonna start level one as a cleric so that we can get heavy armor. Now, you can can pick this up at any time if you choose cleric you will get heavy armor if you choose the right subclass but we're gonna grab it at number one that way we can just go ahead and equip it and get it done and out of the way for our subclass we are going to choose the war domain that is because it will give us extra attacks that we can use it will max out at a total of three extra attacks and these will recharge every long rest for our ability points we're gonna go 17 into strength 14 into dexterity 16 into constitution and 10 into wisdom we're not gonna be a Cleric, so wisdom really doesn't matter all that much. At level two, we are going to immediately spec into our main class, which is going to be Barbarian. At level four, we will get to pick our subclass, and for that subclass, we are going to choose the Wild Heart Barbarian. For the Bestial Heart, we are going to choose the Tiger Heart, and that is because it is going to give us an absolutely insane AoE attack when we are raging. This attack inflicts bleed on our enemies, as well as hitting up to three enemies at one time in a cone in front of us. At level five, we will get our first feat, and for our first feat, we are going to choose Heavy Armor Master. This will bring our strength up to 18, as well as decrease all damage that we take from non-magical attacks by three, as long as we are wearing heavy armor, which we will be wearing heavy armor. Now, I know there's gonna be a bunch of you that are gonna jump down there in the comments and be like, but Fire Spark, wearing heavy armor negates a bunch of the bonuses you get from raging, blah, 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 blah. And yeah, none of that really matters because we're making a tiny sacrifice of some of the bonuses that we would get while we are raging for the ability to become immortal, which makes all of those bonuses a moot point. Well, maybe not the damage bonus that we get from raging. However, it's a minor price to pay for all the other bonuses that we are going to get. And we can easily supplement that damage with damage increases from tons of other things. All right, so now we're at level five and the build is almost ready to go. Now we only need two items. The first item that we want to get a hold of is the skin burster. This is going to be our weapon of choice. It can be found it the Githyanki Crush, and it is in the Inquisitor's Chamber all the way in a back room. You enter the door, head to your right, and it's there leaning against the wall. This can be gotten relatively early on in the game, maybe before you are even level five. Now, at this point, you want to be wearing whatever the best heavy armor you can get a hold of at this given point in time, wherever you are in the game at level five. Our main power comes from this weapon and the Warding Bond spell. The Skin Burster has a fun little ability called called Force Conduit. Force Conduit reduces a bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage per turn of it you have remaining. When you attack an entity with this weapon, you gain two turns of Force Conduit. This stacks up to a total of seven turns. That means that if you have the full seven stacks on it, all damage that you take that is bludgeoning, piercing, or slashing is reduced by seven. It's also reduced by another three if you are wearing heavy armor. That means all non-magic damage that you take is reduced by a total of 10. And our only weakness at this point in the game is magic damage and we are resistant to that due to warding bond. And as you can see from the footage that's been playing on the screen, we are extremely tanky. Now let's talk about how to deal with warding bond in a way that is absolutely broken at this point in the game. So what you wanna do is you want to turn Gale into a cleric. Gale has a neat little ability that when he is not in your party, he auto heals. So that means that any damage that he shares with you because Warding Bond shares damage, he will just heal through it. So what you do is you put Gale in your party every morning because Warding Bond lasts until you take a long rest. So you wake up, you put Gale in your party, you cast Warding Bond on yourself, then you kick him back out of the party and you go about your day. Any magic damage that you take, he will take as well, but he'll never die because he'll just heal through it. And you never really suffer any of the negative consequences that you are supposed to suffer from Warding Bond. Now what if you don't have Gale? Well, we will talk talk about how to deal with this if you don't have Gale or if for some reason you lost Gale later on in the video. But for now, let's talk about the next piece of this puzzle that helps reduce the damage that you take even more. And that is the Adamantine Splint Armor. I have a video showing you how to get this armor as well as a bunch of others. I will link that down in the description. I'm not gonna go through all of that again in this video. Go watch that video if you don't know how to get a hold of it, but you can get a hold of this in Act 1. It's 
it's probably going to be a little bit later in Act 1. You may or may not be level 5 by the time you get to this point. The Adamantine Splint Armor states that it has 18 armor class, which is absolutely fantastic. It's going to make you even harder to hit. It also has the Magical Plate ability, which is one of the things we are after, which states that all incoming damage, and this is all damage, so even magic damage, is reduced by 2. It also has the ability that we can't be crit hit if we are wearing this armor, which is absolutely fantastic because as long as we are not being crit hit, pretty much any damage that we take that is non-magical is not going to get through the buffer that we have from Force Conduit and the other reductions we have with wearing this armor as well as Heavy Armor Master. With just this armor and Heavy Armor Master, all damage that we take is reduced by 5. So now we have a situation where we have all damage reduced by half and then it's also reduced by 5 and then it's also reduced by 7 if we have full stacks of force conduit which since we are a barbarian and we are a tiger heart barbarian we can rage and then hit three enemies at one time immediately giving us a six damage reduction in one turn <laughs> at level six we will get a second attack because we continue to spec into barbarian this will make us a level five barbarian and we can use our special tiger attack twice now which means that we can fully stack force conduit in a single turn once you have this splint armor and you have the skin burster and you hit level six you are an absolute force to be reckoned with and you're pretty much good to go but there are plenty of things that we can do to improve this even more and we are going to talk about those so first off when we hit level seven we get an animal aspect for this we want to pick the stallion this is going to help us deal with that pesky pesky magic damage the stallion ability states that when we dash it grants us temporary hit points equal to twice our barbarian level this ability is is absolutely insane. The only downside to it is that we cannot stack it every turn. You actually have to use up all of your temporary hit points until you can activate it again. I mean, you can keep activating it. You just won't refresh those hit points until they're gone. Once they're gone, you can just dash again and get your hit points back. But Fire Spark, I'm going to have to use up an action in order to do that. Yeah, for a little while you are. But considering you can hit multiple enemies with a single attack, you get two attacks per turn. And because we chose the ward domain cleric you can get three attacks per turn for a couple of times every long rest it's really easy to keep the force conduit stacks maxed out and sacrifice a turn of attacking in order to get those hit points back so that you never actually take any real damage and we do have a fix for this but it's going to be a few levels before you can get the ability to dash as a bonus action so at level eight we are going to spec into row we're only going to be over here so that we can get dash at as a bonus action and we will get that at level 9. Once we have cunning action dash, we can dash every single turn that we need to in order to refresh those temporary hit points without sacrificing our attacks. From there we are just going to continue to level as a barbarian at level 11. We will get our next feat. For our next feat we're going to choose savage attacker. This is going to help ensure that we do maximum amounts of damage and then at level 12 we get brutal critical and our build is complete. At this point, you are absolutely unstoppable. Nothing can hurt you. And the things that do hurt you only hurt your temporary HP and make you insanely difficult to deal with. As you see on the screen, I am getting absolutely pummeled by everything over here at Basilisk Gate and nothing can actually do anything to me. You are basically a semi-immortal demigod. Now let's talk about Warding Bond if for some reason you don't have Gale. I'm trying to keep this as spoiler free for those of you who haven't got that far in the game yet. So if for some reason you don't have Gale, which you may or may not, here is how you can abuse Warding Bond. Whoever you do this with needs to be in your party. I like to use a hireling, but maybe you don't want to use a hireling. Regardless of how you go about doing it, the character needs to be in your party, but they're going to remain at camp. You're going to respect them into a Knowledge Domain Cleric. At level 7, the Knowledge Domain Cleric gets an ability called Odalex Resilient Sphere. This may makes whoever you cast it on more or less useless because they can't do too much while they're in it, but they are invulnerable. So what you're going to do is you are going to separate this person from your group. You're going to leave them at camp. You're going to cast Warding Bond on your character that is running this build, and then you're going to leave camp. You're going to select the character that cast Warding Bond. That's going to take you back to camp where they're standing. You are going to cast Odalex Resilient Spear and then go into turn-based mode. The reason you're going to do this is because the Resilient Sphere only lasts for 
three turns. But here's the kicker. Turn-based mode is now only happening at camp. As long as you do not take the rest of your party back to camp, they will never enter turn-based mode. So they can run around doing whatever they want. The character that has cast Warding Bond is now in an invulnerable sphere and cannot take any damage. So even if you do take damage, they will not. They are also frozen in time back at base. And they will continue to be frozen in time back at base until at which point you decide to pass time back at base or take it out of turn-based mode. And that's how you can break Warding Bond without Gale. I don't know a way to do this until you are level 7 though. I don't know any other way to make a character invulnerable. It, theoretically, any other way that is possible to make a character invulnerable can be used to make them invulnerable and go into turn-based mode and freeze time in one area that is separate from the rest of your people. Now, if you want to have access to your camp, you can literally take this person anywhere else that you're not going to be. As long as you don't go close to them, you will never enter turn-based mode with them. So you can just put them anywhere that you're not going to be that is far from your party and put them in turn-based mode and make them invulnerable, whether it is with this spell or some other spell or some other way to make them invulnerable. And there you go. Now you know how to make an absolute broken monster of a build. From this point on, you just want to fill the build out gear-wise with anything and everything that you can do that's going to increase your damage. That's it. That's all you really need. The rest of the core build is there with just those two items. Your main power of this build comes from the Warding Bond spell and being a barbarian. And this build is literally so strong that it is going to feel like cheating. All right, well, that's pretty much it for this one. Hopefully you all enjoyed this video. If you found it helpful or informational, please consider hitting the subscribe button and notification bell so you can be notified when I upload other videos. And if you're looking for some more Baldur's Gate content, you can find a link to another one of my videos on the screen right now. I want to give an absolute massive shout out and thank you to all of my channel supporters for helping to keep these videos a sponsor free. You all are absolutely amazing people. If you would like to become an official channel supporter, check out the links in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like to comment, just hit that thumbs up button and share your support. Until next time, thanks for watching.